Good morning, namaste to each of you. Thank you for joining me this morning to honor your mind and your body and your spirit. Let's just take a moment to become present. So find a nice comfortable seated position on a cushion or a blanket, block, something that will allow your spine and back of your neck to get nice and long something that will allow your chest to open up, your diaphragm to open up, and your heart to open up. Gently close your eyes and soften your thoughts. Soften your eyes. Soften your shoulders. Soften your heart. Observe your breath as it is, soft and gentle, breathing life into you with each inhale and relaxation with each exhale. Feel the grace of being present, returning to that awareness again and again. You may open your eyes for this morning's intention. You may think of positive word or phrase to have with you on your mat and perhaps carry with you throughout the day. This morning, um, we'd like to talk about the intention brahmacharya. So the yamas were written in approximately 500 BC. They were written as guidelines on how to interact with the world, but they are still relevant today. That's, that's why it's great to go back to them like every so often, because um, as you'll see, they, they pop up today as they did pop up probably 500, in 500 BC. So the um, Brahmachari is the fourth Yama, and it started out meaning celibacy. But now the modern day understanding is non-excess. You'll see that most often. And an even more recent interpretation is uh, proper use of energy. And they all have a common thread of finding the balance between overdoing and underdoing. So looking at excess as one of the um, descriptors or translations. Um, excess is, is understanding, well, to understand non-excess is you have to understand what is enough. So you have to understand what is enough in work, in possessions, in food, in thinking, and in money. So this past Sunday, um, there was a story about Brahmacharya on the CBS Sunday morning show. Anybody watched that show? No, Suzanne watches that. So their, their lead story was called the top 1% should wealth have its limits. And it was a story about how many billionaires there are and how the numbers have increased dramatically all over the world and especially during COVID. Um, so the, it, it was about setting limits. Um, there's a, a Netherlands movement called limitaris, Limitarianism. I think that's how, I, how you pronounce it. And they're um, saying, okay, you know, is a billion enough? And if it is, what do you do with the excess? You know, how is that gonna benefit the world? Um, and 
it's it was an interesting story. I can provide the link. Um, it's it's on YouTube, so I can provide the link if anybody's interested. I'll stick it on the uh, our um, thread and in the email. But it's um, it was so um, interesting to me that you know this this discussion of non excess was relevant in 500 BC and now it's still relevant today and it's probably been relevant all these years in between. The segment ended with talking about how Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, during the eight minute segment that, of that story, he um, became $1 million richer. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> that's excessive. So, um, you know, the yamas, the bottom line is what I'm trying to say is that the yamas and the niyamas that we learn, um, they're around all the time. They, they um, you just kind of look for them and then weigh in and try to see your life where or the world filtered through these um, yamas and niyamas. And I, I think it's really interesting. So balancing between having um, overdoing and underdoing, let's do a pranayama this morning that's about balance. And so that one is called Nadi Shodana, Sh Shodana, sorry. Um, and it's also known as alternate nostril breathing. It's a balancing and a very calming breath practice. And I've mentioned before, um, when I first uh, started, learning about this particular um, breath practice, breath reading technique, it, um, I read a story about a, a young person who had uh, panic attacks and um, tried all sorts of therapies and um, counseling and all sorts of things just to try to get rid of them. And this particular technique was the only thing that worked for them. And talking to George, who's not with us today, I hope he doesn't mind, but his, his daughter, who is a professional dancer, has a dance studio down in New York, um, he, he asked her about this particular breathing technique. And she says a lot of dancers employ this before they go out on stage because it just calms you down. So it, it, and the alternate nostrils um, get activated. Um, the right nostril activates your energy channel and the left nostril activates your rest channel. So another cool thing about this breathing technique is if you're a side sleeper, if you lay in bed on your right side so that your left nostril, which is the rest channel, has more access to air, that helps you to go to sleep better. And then if you wanna wake up, you would be on your left side in bed so that your right nostril is activated and allowed to get more air. So it's, um, and I've actually tried that and it, it does work for me. So um, let's uh, practice our uh, Nadi Shadana, which is uh, the alternate nostril. And that technique um, has a mudra that you employ. It's that's it's tr traditionally done with the technique of um, or the mudra of um, Vishnu. So you take your hand and you um, bend your um, pointer and your middle finger, and then you have your thumb, your ring finger, and your um, pinky extended. So that's the Vishnu mudra, and then you put your thumb on your right nostril to start. Let me take my glasses off. And then inhale through the left nostril. And when you come to the top of the inhale, you bring your ring finger over to the left nostril and you close the left nostril and you exhale through the right nostril. Then you inhale through the right nostril when you reach the top of the inhale, you return your thumb to the right nostril, letting go with your, of your left nostril and exhale through the left nostril. Then inhale through the left nostril. When you reach the top of the inhale, 
you bring your ring finger over and close the left nostril and exhale through the right nostril. So you just keep flipping your fingers back and forth. The key is whenever you're at the top of your inhale, it's time to flip the fingers. So inhale, inhaling through the right, closing, <laughs> there you go. Inhaling through the right with your ring finger on your left nostril and then switching, exhaling through the left. So let's just practice that for a while. And you can, we're gonna segue into meditation. So you can do this. Um, this te breathing technique, people typically do for five, maybe even 20 minutes um, to really, really get that sense of, of calming and balance in you. So you can keep going through the meditation with this, um, or you can practice it a little bit. And then uh, when you're, Finished, you can just rest into a regular meditation posture that works for you. And I'll meet you on the mat. You can relax your uh, meditation now and we'll start our asana practice. Um, I should mention that a block will come in very handy today. So if you have a, a block nearby or um, roll of toilet paper works well as a block, um, something that you can stand on. It's not necessary. Um, we'll have some modifications for that as well. So well, let's just uh, continue in your nice seated position with your, your spine and back of your neck nice and long. And we're going to start with just some neck and head stretches. So we're going to just um, look down, send our gaze down toward the floor. Then inhale, send it up toward the ceiling. But send it out at an angle. Don't send it, your eyes straight up to the ceiling so that your head tips all the way back. Just send it out at your eyes out at a diagonal so that um, you're not uh, wrenching your neck. So exhale, bring your head back down, your, send your gaze down. Inhale, send your gaze up. Exhale, send your gaze down. Inhale, send your gaze up. 
And one last time, send your gaze down. And then send your gaze up. Bring your head back to neutral spot where it's sitting right over your, your shoulders. And then we'll gently make no sign. So exhale, sending your nose over to the left, looking over your left shoulder. And then back to center, inhaling. And then exhale over to the right. Inhale back to center. Exhale to the left. Inhale back to center. Exhale to the right. Inhale back to center. And one last time to the left. Back to center and in or exhale to the right and inhale back to center. We'll set our fingertips on the mat beside us, do some sun breaths on this cloudy, maybe it's going to snow type day. <laughs> so inhale, send your hands up overhead, big deep inhale, and then exhale, bringing them back down. Big deep inhale, lifting your arms up overhead. Exhale, bringing them back down. Inhale up. And down. You can do your ujjayi breath where you can hear the sound of your breath, the ocean breath. Inhale, come back up. Keeping your hands up overhead, we're going to twist to the left and bring your hands down so that your right hand's on your left knee and your left hand is right behind your hips, turning your head toward the left. And then inhale, sweep your hands up and over. And then we're going to turn to the right and bring our hands down, left hand on your right knee. Right hand behind your hips. Inhale, sweep your hands up and over again. Coming, twisting to the left, bringing your right hand down on your left kneecap. Left hand behind your hips. And then keeping your right hand on your left kneecap, bring your right hand over I mean, your left hand over, sweep it over and bring it over to your right kneecap. So your arms are crossed in front of you. And then we're gonna bring the backs of our hands together for eagle arms. And this might be a good spot for you. Or if you wanna try, you can bring the palms of your hands together for eagle arms. And just breathe into this pose. And then release your arms, bring them back down to the mat. We'll do a few more sun breaths. So inhale deeply. And exhale. Inhale deeply. And exhale. Inhale deeply, bring your arms up overhead, and then we're gonna twist to the right, bringing our left hand to our right kneecap, right hand behind your hips, turning toward the left side, of, or right side of your mat. Then inhale, sweeping your hands up and overhead, twist to the left and bring your hands down, right hand on your knee, left hand behind your hip, and then sweep up again, big inhale, turning over to the right, bring your arms down, left hand on your right knee, right hand behind you. And then we're gonna take our right hand, keeping our left hand on our right knee, keeping that still, bring our right hand over to our left kneecap, crossing our arms in front of us. And then bring the backs of the palms together 
for eagle arms. And if this works for you, this is great. Or if you can, you can try to bring the palms of your hands together. And just breathe into this pose. You might feel a little tension, especially if you're trying to bring your palms together. Send those nourishing deep breaths, any tension you may feel. And again, you know, brahmacharya is about not finding the balance between overdoing it and underdoing it. So this is, you know, over and under and around pretzely. So find where the balance works for you on um, whether bringing your palms is overdoing it or just having the back of your hands together might be underdoing it. Just find that nice balance. That sweet spot is what I call it. Okay, let's bring our arms back down. We roll down on our mat. Roll down one vertebrae at a time, send your arms straight out, slowly with control. Bring your arms down. Bring your knees to your chest. Give them a nice hug. And then send your both legs down to the bottom of the mat. So you're in a reclined mountain pose here. We're gonna take our left foot, the sole of our left foot, um, and slide that up the inner part of your right leg till you reach the kneecap so that your legs are in a figure four position. Your top of your body is nice and relaxed in the mat. You can tuck your navel to your spine to bring your uh, lower back toward, toward the mat. And then we take the ankle, left ankle, and cross it over the right leg, right above the kneecap, the right kneecap, so that your left ankle's right above the kneecap. And then slide your right foot up so that the bottom of the foot is on the mat. And then we're going to come into reclined pigeon. So you, you can stay here guiding your left knee toward the left side of your mat, and that's fine. Or you can lift your right leg up, wrap your fingers around the back of your right thigh, and gently guide your right leg toward your chest. Both of those are options. Remember, any part of the pose is doing the pose. So again, you can guide your left knee out toward the left side of your mat, even if you lifted up your right leg, maybe wedging your, your elbow against it. And then we're going to take our left foot and just uh, lay it on top of our right leg, like we were sitting in a chair with our legs crossed. So the right leg is at a 90 degree angle, knees straight up, leg out, and then your left leg's wrapped around it. And then that might be fine. This would be considered eagle legs. Or you can wrap your left toes around the back of your right calf. And that's kind of like when we had our palms together and then um, back of the palms and then to the front of the palms. So you can try that for eagle legs. And then you can gently unwrap that, slide your left ankle back so that it's right below your right knee and set your right foot on the mat. And we're gonna then tip our legs to the left side of the mat so the Left ankle stays right on top of the right knee, and we're going to just gently let them release down to the mat, down to the floor for a nice reclined twist. Then bring your knees back to your chest, give them a nice gentle hug, and we'll do that all on the other side. So 
You can slide both feet down to the bottom of the mat. We're gonna take the sole of our right foot, slide it up our inner left leg to the point where it gets, or reaches the knee and becomes a figure four, the legs become a figure four. Then take that right ankle, set it on top of your left leg, right above the kneecap, and slide your left foot up and plant that on the mat. You're in the reclined pigeon here, guiding your right knee toward the right side of the mat. You can stay here or you can uh, lift your left leg, interlacing your hands behind the leg and guide that left leg toward your chest. And then use, perhaps use your right elbow to keep the right knee pointing to the right side of the mat. And then we're gonna have our left leg come to a 90 degree angle, angle and then just wrap our right leg around it like we're sitting in a chair with our legs crossed. So this might be great for you for eagle posed legs, or you could take your right toes and wrap them around your left calf and have the full um, eagle legs experience. <laughs> And then unwrap the left or right foot rather and send your right ankle back to uh, the spot right below your left knee. Place your left foot back on the mat and keeping your right ankle where it is right below the left knee, you can take both legs and lay them down to the right side of the mat. A nice stretch there. And then inhale, bringing both knees back to your chest. And then we'll um, come back up to tabletop. So you can either rock yourself back up or you can bring your legs to the side and come up um, as we do at the end of class. So your preference, just rock myself back up. I mean, up to a tabletop. The tabletop, our wrists are right below shoulders, knees right below our hips. Fingers just laid out so that the weight of your arms and upper body is resting more on your fingertips than your wrist. Navels tucked to the spine, creating a nice flat back. You're gently pushing down to create space between your shoulders and your ears. And we'll do some cat cows. So exhale, round your back, drop your head down, tailbone down. And then for cow, we're gonna inhale, lift our head up and our tailbone up. Exhale for cat, rounding our back, dropping our head and tailbone down. Inhale for cow, lifting our head up, tailbone up. And continue at your own pace, synchronizing your deep inhale and exhale to the movements. And come back to flat back to tabletop and bring your knees together 
we're going to do something a little different today. So take your hands and um, go toward the top of the map, maybe one hand width. Uh, so where they were right below your shoulders, you're just going to take one hand width and move them up toward the top of the mat. And then we're going to, on the inhale, bring your right knee outside your right elbow and then back again. Inhale, bring your left knee outside your left elbow and then back again. So continue that. Right knee outside your right elbow. Inhale, lift knee outside your left elbow. Keeping your navel tucked to your spine. And you can feel that in your core. It's like what we do when we're in downward dog, but we're just trying to move our leg a little bit higher by putting it on the outside of our elbow. And do a couple more and then come back to tabletop. And then lower your hips to your ankles and come into child's pose, stretching your hands out in front of you. And come back up to tabletop. <clears throat> we'll tuck our toes underneath and walk our hands back and come into um, the squat and push down, coming up into mountain pose. So for our mountain essentials, our big toes are facing the square or straight edge of the mat. We'll lift our toes up off the mat, spread them apart and then bring them down to the mat, still spread out as far as you can and lift up on to your toes by lifting your heels up off the mat. And then come back down, lowering your heels to the mat. Legs are nice and straight and strong. Keep a gentle, soft bend in your knees. Navel's tucked to your spine. Back is nice and straight and tall. Shoulders are relaxed and rolled back. Crown of your head is reaching to the sky. So it's nice and flat. Chin tucked in slightly so your head's not jutting out. And inhale, sweeping our hands up overhead. Exhale, come down forward fold, bending your knees deeply, bringing your hands to the floor or the mat. Just take a moment here to check in with your body. Send any nourishing breath that you can to uh, any tense spots. And then inhale, bring your hands up to your shins, flatten out your back, setting your gaze down. Nice long spine, long back of your neck. And then exhale, forward fold, dropping the crown of your head down toward the mat. And then inhale, sweeping your hands up, all the way up and over, and coming up onto your tippy toes. And we'll do some palm tree sways here. And bring your heels back down to the mat. Bring your hands back down, forward fold, bending your knees deeply. Hands come back to the mat. Inhale, bring your hands to your shins, flattening out your back, straightening out your neck by looking down. And dropping the crown of your head down toward the mat. Inhale, sweep your hands from the mat all the way up overhead, bringing your hands together, 
We'll drop the right hand down to the right thigh and slide that hand down toward your right knee. Supported side stretch. Inhale, come back up. Bring your right hand to your left, then drop your left hand down. Slide it down toward your left knee. Side stretch to the left. Inhale, come back up. We'll do that again on both sides. So drop your right hand down, slide it down toward your right knee. And then inhale, come back up. And drop your left hand, slide it down toward your knee. And inhale, come back up. Exhale, forward fold, bending your knees deeply, bringing your hands down to the mat. Inhale, bring your hands to your shins, straightening out your back. Nice long back, nice long neck. Open chest. And then drop the crown of your head down toward the mat. Inhale, sweep your hands all the way up overhead. Bring your palms together, bringing your palms to heart center. We're gonna do a few chair poses here. So this is the other element of eagle pose. So we turn sideways, our feet are about hip width apart. And you're gonna tuck, an uh, important part of chair pose is tucking your navel to your spine so it supports your lower back. Then so bring our arms out in front of us, bend our knees, and just lower our hips down toward our ankles, keeping our navel tucked to our spine. And just bring it down to that spot where it's not overdoing or underdoing. If you bring your thigh down so that's parallel to the mat, that's great, but it's not necessary. And then inhale, come back up. And we'll do that again. So send your arms out straight. Navels tucked to your spine. Bending your knees, you're gonna drop your hips down toward your ankles. See if you can come just a gauche bit lower. And then inhale, come back up. And we'll do this one last time. So bring your arms out, navels tucked to your spine, bend your knees, lower your hips to your ankles. And then come back up. Then sweep your hands up overhead. Big inhale, big exhale, forward fold. Bring your hands down to the mat, generously bending your knees. Inhale, bring your hands to your shins, flatten your back, back of the neck and back spine are nice, straight and long. And then bring the crown of your head down toward the mat. And sweep your hands all the way up from the bottom of the mat, up overhead. Hands come together, palms come to heart center. And then the palms will come to the back of your hips, fingertips pointing down, keeping your feet about hip width apart. Shoulders are relaxed and rolled back. And the chin is tucked to your chest. And then just gently send your shoulders back for supported back bend. Continue your breaths. Hold the pose, not your breath. And then come back up. Sweep our arms up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Bending at your knees, bringing your palms down to the mat. We're going to send our right foot 
to the back of the mat for a runner's lunge. Your runner's lunge, your knees right over your ankle. Back leg stays nice and active. And when I say that, it's like you feel the energy in your thigh and your knee. And you push your back heel or the heel on your right foot to the back of the mat. Feel that energy in your leg. Place your right hand on the mat and sweep your left hand up and overhead. You send your gaze up to your hand. And then bring your left hand back down to the mat. Bring your right knee down to the mat and the top of your right foot down to the mat, coming into low lunge. And then with our left leg, knee over the ankle, push down into that foot and then bring your hands, bring your hands up overhead. Whoa, I guess this is a balance pose. There we go. Up overhead. And just feel the stretch there. And then bring both hands down on the right side of your leg so that they're both, both palms are on the inner so inside of your left foot. Your left knee is resting against your left shoulder. And this is now lizard pose. So lizard pose, you could stay here, or if you want, you can bring your forearms down to the mat bringing your hands into Anjali Mudra in front of you for an extra stretch. And come back up on your hands, if not already, and tuck your back toe under, coming back up to runner's lunge. Then we're gonna walk our hands to the right, Coming into wide-legged stance. Our toes are, are pointing toward one another with our heels out, so a bit pigeon-toed. And if you have your block, you can bring it here to help you. We're gonna take our left hand, place it on the mat, and sweep our right arm up. And you can do that with your left hand on a block, sweeping your right hand up. All the while, keep your knees gently bent. And then bring your right hand back down and then sweep your left hand up. And you can send your gaze up to your left hand. And then bring your left hand back down. And walk our hands out in front, just as far as you can go comfortably. And then I'll walk our hands back so that they are underneath your torso. And then just kind of release your hands from the mat. Send your crown of your head down toward the mat and let gravity and give your back a nice gentle stretch. And then bend your knees more deeply, placing your hands on your hips. We're going to come back up to a standing position. Pivot your left foot so that it points to the front of the mat. And your back foot pivots. We're going to come into warrior two. So the left knee is right over the left ankle. Back leg is nice and um, strong. We're gonna push down to the mat with our feet and then push away from the center, away from your midline. So really feel connected to the earth, really feel grounded. Send your arms up at shoulders height and then gently turn your head looking to the left fingertips. And then reverse warrior or peaceful warrior, send your right arm down, lifting your left hand up to the sky, following your fingertips with your gaze.
And then bring your left arm, forearm, to your left thigh. Sweep your right arm up so it's pointing straight up to the sky. Send your gaze up to your right hand. And then bring your right hand down to the mat, pivoting both your back foot. And then we're gonna bring our back foot up to our front foot. So push down in your left foot so that you lift your right foot up and come into a forward fold. And then inhale, come up, sweeping your arms up overhead, palms come together. Palms come to heart center. So then we'll go into eagle pose. And again, you may want your block here. Without the block, you can just, we'll take our left leg as our stable leg to start with. And then we'll just cross our right foot over our left foot and have the toes on the mat. So then we'll bring our right, let's see. Right arm up and the left arm goes over it. And then the hands, back of the hands come together or the palms can come together, whichever works for you. Then we're gonna send our hips down toward the floor and you can keep your toe on the mat or on the block or you can lift your foot off as your hips keep descending down. Oops. And then you can try to wrap your foot around your calf. This is a flexibility, balance, and strength pose. And then release. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. Sweeping your hands up overhead, big inhale. Exhale, forward fold, bringing your hands down on the mat. This time we're gonna send our left foot back. Plant our left hand on the mat, sweeping our right hand up to the sky. Following your right hand with your gaze. And then bring your right hand back down. Lower your left leg and your left, or left knee and your left top of your foot down to the mat. And we'll come into a low lunge, pushing off the front foot. We'll lift our arms up overhead. And then bring both hands down to the mat on the inner side or the left side of your foot. So your right knee is going to be against your right shoulder. Both hands are on the inside of your foot for lizard pose. And you can stay here, feel the stretch here, or send your forearms down to the mat. Feeling an extra strength extra stretch rather, and your knee, try to keep it closer to, close to your shoulder there. Then bring your hands back down to the mat if they're not there already. Tuck your back toe under, coming back up to runner's lunge. We're gonna walk our hands to the left side of the mat. I'm going to flip around so you have the front of me, not the back of me. Again, your toes are going to come inward, extending your heels outward for a little bit of a pigeon toed effect. Knees are gently bent. And you could use the block or not. You can just sweep our right hand up overhead for twist. And then bring that back down. Sweep our left hand up. The ceiling, fine with your gaze if you can. And back down. 
Walk your hands forward. And then walk your hands back. So your hands are right below you. And then lift your hands up off the mat. If you want, you can uh, grab hold of your opposite elbows and just relax here, letting gravity create the, the stretch for you. Knees are bent gently. And then putting your hands back down on the mat, really bending your knees now. Place your hands on your hips and come to an upright position. Then pivot your right foot to the front of the mat. Pivot your back foot coming into warrior two. So your knees right over your ankle. Back foot is nice and stung in the mat. We push down and push toward the ends, each end of the mat, really feeling grounded. And then sweep our arms up to shoulder height and gently turn your gaze to look at your right fingertips. We'll slowly lower our left arm, raising our right arm up for Peaceful Warrior. And then bring your right forearm to your right thigh and sweep your left hand up, pointing to the sky and send your gaze up to your hand. Let's bring your left hand back down to the mat, pivoting on the back foot. We're gonna bring our back foot up to meet the right. So push down on your right foot, your front foot, lifting up your back leg and then bringing it to join your right foot. Coming into forward fold. Inhale, sweeping your hands up overhead. Palms come together, palms come to heart center. And we'll do equal pose on the other foot. So we'll take our left, our right leg and ground it into the mat. And then our left toe will be on the mat or on block. We'll bring our left arm up and then bring our right arm over. Backs of the hand palms come together or the front of the palms come together. Find some stability here. And then slowly lower your hips toward the mat, bringing your left foot off the mat. And if you can, you can try to wrap your left foot around your right calf. So this pose to me is the epitome of figuring out what's overdoing it and what's underdoing it. And then relax, release. So we'll bring our toes, pinky toes to the edge of the mat. Heels are, are pointed toward each other, 45 degree angle. Bring our hands to heart center. We'll come down into a wide legged squat. So gently lower your torso by lowering your hips down toward the mat, bending your knees, bringing your torso between your legs. And then bringing the palms of your hands down toward the mat for an extra stretch. Then we'll bring our um, selves, we're gonna roll down on our mat. So find yourself a nice seated position on the mat and then gently roll down or you could take the express method down. I think I'll do express method at this point. Bring your knees to your chest, give them a nice hug. And then you interlace your hands and set them underneath your head. 
with your elbows pointed out to each side. You're just kind of in that relaxed position where your head's resting gently on your interlaced fingers. Knees are tucked to your chest. And then we'll send out the right leg. We're going to send it out so that it's extended higher into the air, not lower to the mat. So it's about a 45 degree angle off the mat. And then bring that back. Extend the left leg out. You can flex your toes at the end. And inhale, bring that back. We'll do that a couple more times. Right leg goes out. And bring it back. Left leg goes out with control. Pointing your toes, flexing them. Bring that back. Right leg goes out again. Pointing your toes. Inhale, come back. And the left leg goes out one last time. And then comes back. So check that your navel's tucked to your spine so that your lower back is nice and snug on the mat. And then we're gonna take our, our hands and um, create like a hammock for our head. So we're gonna lift our head off the mat, tucking our chin to our chest, and then just relaxing our head into our hands so that the hands are really supporting the head. We're not straining the neck and at this point, elbows are still out to the sides. I'm going to do the same thing. So extend your right leg out, 45 degree angle, bring it back in, extend your left leg out, bring it back in, right leg goes out, bring it back in, left leg goes out, bring it back in. One last time, right goes, right leg goes out, bring it back in, left leg goes out, bring it back in. And then you can continue doing this for the next round is taking your right elbow to your left knee as you extend your right leg out. So you can extend your right leg out and bring your right elbow up to your left knee. And then bring everything back and then extend your left leg out, bringing your left elbow to the right knee and come back. A couple more of these. Right leg goes out, left or right elbow to left knee and back. Left leg goes out, left elbow to right knee and then back. And one last time, left, right leg goes out, right elbow to left knee and back, left elbow to right knee as your left leg goes back. And then bring everything back down to the mat and prepare for Shavasana. Take your heels, send them to the corners of your mat, let your feet flop open, relax your arms, alongside of you with the palms facing up. They're out maybe 45 degrees from your torso. Shoulders are nice and relaxed and snug into the mat. And then just relax all your muscles and your bones into the mat. Let the mat support you. And let the nutrients of today's practice so deep within you. Maybe place a gentle smile upon your lips. And today I have a poem by Dana Falls called Walk Slowly. It only takes a reminder to breathe, 
a moment to be still. And just like that, something in me settles, softens, and makes space for imperfection. The harsh voice of judgment drops to a whisper. And I remember again that life isn't a relay race, that we will all cross the finish line, that waking up to life is what we were born for. As many times as I forget, catch myself charging forward without even knowing where I'm going, that many times I can make the choice to stop, to breathe, and be, and walk slowly into the mystery.